This is Candy with eyes to jesus.blogspot.com. And today I need to make some more bread, some more jam, and some homemade peanut butter with some peanuts I need to use up. So join me as I'll show you how I make homemade bread, homemade jam, and homemade peanut butter for the ultimate PB and J sandwiches. So first we're going to get started with the bread and today I'm just going to make two loaves of basic white bread. Now if you want to change this to wheat bread, just switch out to wheat flour or half white and half wheat. I'm going to do all white today. Now I'm going to use a KitchenAid mixer. You can use a Bosch mixer or you can do this by hand in a nice big bowl. Anyway, will work. So in my KitchenAid mixer bowl, I already put in two teaspoons of yeast. And to those two teaspoons of yeast, I put in three cups of warm water. Now to that, I'm going to add about one teaspoon of sea salt. I like to use a fine Himalayan pink sea salt. And then I'm going to add, I'm just going to pour in a little bit of grapeseed oil, maybe the equivalent of uh, a tablespoon to two tablespoons, just a bit of oil. And then to that, I'm going to put in two tablespoons of pure raw honey. So there's one. Okay, and now we're going to add flour. And since I'm making two loaves, I'm going to put in six cups of flour. Ta-da! Now I'm going to use my spiral dough hook and I'm going to get this going in my KitchenAid mixer. And what you want to do, whether you're using a KitchenAid mixer, a Bosch mixer, or by hand, you're just going to mix it all together. Use your hands when it starts getting hard to mix with a spoon if you're doing this by hand. And just combine it until it turns into a sticky dough. You don't want a batter, you want it to be a dough, but a sticky dough. So depending on the amount of humidity in your house and in your ingredients, you might have to add a bit more flour. Uh, you may have to add a bit more water, but usually not. But yeah, you want to keep mixing it until it turns into a sticky dough. Once it's a ball of sticky dough, you do not need to knead it. You can knead it if you would like, but you don't need to. I usually don't. I just uh, have my KitchenAid mixer mix all of those ingredients together until it turned into a sticky ball of dough. It's very sticky right now. I don't want to really play around with this with my hands right now. If you mix it by hand, you're probably going to want to uh, wipe your hands off for this next step and then we're going to get into this again. So meanwhile, make sure your hands are clean. I removed my watch and ring and I'm going to take some of this grapeseed oil and I'm just going to drizzle a little bit on top of the sticky dough and then a little bit on the side. Just need a little bit, just a bit of a drizzle. I'm going to now spread the grapeseed oil all over the top of the dough. And to da, that gets rid of the stickiness without adding flour. Because if you add flour to get rid of the stickiness, uh, it can end up giving you uh, more of a possibility of having a dense, thick brick bread. So instead, just a little bit of oil gets rid of the sticky. All right, And then I'm just going to flip it over, make sure I have oil rubbed on the other side. So now I have this nice ball of dough that is not sticky because I coated it in a very light layer of grapeseed oil. And this is two loaves worth. So I am just going to divide this ball of dough into two balls of dough. They do not have to be exact. Close enough is close enough. As long as they look approximately the same, they feel approximately the same amount of weight, good enough. All right, and then when you have your two balls of dough, but have prepared before you do this buttered two bread pans liberally buttered with a lot of butter. Now if you don't have bread pans, don't worry about it. Just butter like a cookie sheet or a baking sheet and then just form these into a ball and put them on the sheets instead. But if you have the loaf pans, I personally uh, like the glass ones in the 8 inch. Now I'm going to take this and make a gluten ball. So I'm going to fold this over my fist and then I'm going to pinch it closed at the bottom. Then I'm going to pop this into my buttered loaf pan with the ugly pinched side facing up. Now I'm using my knuckles to push this dough into the pan. Remember, if you're doing this without loaf pans, you just need to form it into a nice gluten ball and then set the pinch side down on your buttered pan and you're done. But if you're doing loaf pans, try this. 
All right, now it's pressed in the pan. Now I'm going to lift it up, flip it over, pop it back in, and just smooth it out a little bit with my hand. This loaf is ready to go to the side. So let's do this again. Our second ball of dough. Let's fold it down over our hand, make a gluten ball, take our fist out, close the ball, pinch it closed at the end. So you have this nice pretty ball, and then you have the ugly side where you pinched it closed. Ugly side up, pinched side up in your loaf pan. Knuckle it down. So you're using your knuckles to kind of coax it to fit nicely into the loaf pan if you are using loaf pans such as I am. Then you're going to take it out and flip it over. And then you're just kind of going to flatten it in, make it happy. And there we go. Now we're going to leave these to rise for one hour. So I'm just going to leave them out, probably put them off to the side with paper towel covering over the top for one hour. While my bread is off to the side rising for an hour, so I had to make sure I had my timer set, and I do. I'm going to make jam. Now, this is a very simple, healthy jam recipe, and uh, this can be done with uh, a berries, pineapples, or grapes. You can use fresh or frozen fruit. So, I'm going to use some frozen strawberries and make strawberry jam. So, I have here a nice pot to cook in. I have a masher. If you don't have one, just use whatever you like to use to mash things up. Could be a big fork. All right, and then I have one cup measuring cup. And I'm going to start with frozen strawberries. You can use, like I said, berries, pineapples, or grapes, frozen or fresh. And I'm going to put in two cups of these berries into my pan. Step one is done. Now I'm going to get this onto medium to high heat on my stove. I'm going to get them heated up until they defrost it because these are frozen. All right, so it'll be quicker if they're fresh. And then once they're defrosted and heated up, I'm going to use my masher and I'm going to use this to stir it and mash these down until it turns into kind of a hot, syrupy, strawberry mush. And that's going to take a few minutes. Here we are a few minutes later and I just have to sit on my counter on a pot holder. I removed it from the heat and the strawberries are now a hot mush. So now let's add some stuff to this hot mush. So you need a one tablespoon measurement and we're going to start with two tablespoons of chia seeds. This is to add health and this is going to be our thickener. And then let's add to that one tablespoon of lemon juice from a bottle or fresh squeeze, your preference. And then to that, get some uh, pure maple syrup and add two tablespoons of that. And then we need to mix it all together. Then once you have it mixed together, we are just going to leave it sit here, the paper towel over the top, and just let it sit for five minutes before we move on to finishing this up. Here we are five minutes later. So I'm just going to uncover this. Grab my spoon, give it a mix, and I'm noticing now that I mix it that it is a bit thicker than it was five minutes ago. So now I'm just going to mix this up and then I'm going to pop it into a jar. So here it is, and I put it in two cute little jars. These uh, I got these from the Target Dollar Spot a few years ago, and they're fabulous for putting homemade jam is jam in. Plus it's great if you're making some as a gift get this cool little jar. I need to get more of these so that I can gift jam more often. These are my last two and I love them. So the jam is done but it is still hot so or warm by this point so it's going to go in the fridge and then uh, we're going to let it cool completely and then it'll be ready to eat. And now we are on to making homemade peanut butter. So we're going to start with two cups of peanuts. Make sure, of course, that they're all shelled and they can be roasted or not roasted. And then pop those two cups of peanuts into a food processor or a powerful blender. I'm using a Nutribullet. And I am going to blend this for a little bit until it's all powdery. Well, I forgot how powerful doing this in a Nutribullet is. Uh, I only had to do one, one run through so far and it was only about 10 seconds. I shook it a little bit as it went. And so now I have ground up peanuts where some of the oil and natural oil inside the peanuts started to come out. So it's starting to already get a little bit uh, oily. 
Now at this point, you can just add like a pinch of salt if you want, and then blend it again, and it'll be a really, really a thick but creamy peanut butter. Or you can do what I'm going to do: add some salt, and again, I'm going to do some fine Himalayan sea salt, pink, and I'm going to do about a half a teaspoon worth. Then let's add some pure raw honey, and I am doing about a tablespoon of that. Now I'm just going to get this going back in my Nutribullet mixer and again it's probably going to take about 10 or 15 uh, seconds on this. If you're using a less powerful blender or a food processor you might have to go longer and I'm just going to whiz this in uh, my Nutribullet until it starts looking like peanut butter. So in a Nutribullet it's going to be about 10 or 15 seconds. So I just whizzed it another 15 seconds or so in uh, my Nutribullet and then I did a little taste test. It tastes like peanut butter. It's really good. But I decided I wanted to add another tablespoon of honey. So I just added another tablespoon of honey and I'm going to whiz this again for about 10 or 15 seconds. All right, so I just finished that up and then I scooped it out into two glass containers. And here you have a natural homemade peanut butter. And I'm going to store these in the fridge because peanut oil, which of course got squeezed out of these peanuts into this peanut butter, can go rancid. And we are not putting preservatives in here besides the honey we put in. So uh, I suggest you store homemade peanut butter in the fridge. And now the bread is still rising. We still got a little while to wait. So I'm just going to do some clean up and do some housework while I wait for that bread to finish rising. Here we are an hour later since we got our bread dough going. And you can see my two loaves of bread are risen and it's smooth and beautiful. So I just preheated my oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. And now I'm going to pop these into the oven for 35 minutes. Bread just now came out of the oven, so I just took out a cutting board, and you want to immediately get the bread out of the pans, so I have my mitts on still. So you just flip it right out. This is why you liberally butter the pan so that it slides right out. Look at that beautiful loaf. And then I'm just setting them on top of the pans, and I'm going to let them cool completely before I slice them. They need to be completely cool before you slice them because they are still baking on the inside. Here we are hours later and my loaves are completely cooled, so it is time to slice them. So I just have your basic serrated bread knife. I just pop it on my cutting board and let's get slicing. I just put uh, some of the homemade peanut butter and some of the homemade jam on a slice of the homemade bread. And this is the good stuff. If you want real, real home peanut butter and jam sandwich, then you might as well do it on homemade bread with homemade peanut butter and homemade jam.